Last season, we gave you the first version of our walking tank stasis titan build. Today, we're giving you an updated version of that build that will give you on-demand extra weapon damage, overshield, extra damage resistance, while at the same time having increased ability regeneration to spawn a ton of crystals and freezing anything in sight. Stasis has felt a bit underwhelming in the past, but this season, we're given new artifact perks, making this build feel even better. As I mentioned before, Knowing what a build excels in is key to knowing how to use it and how to make the most of it. As of now, Stasis Titan is not a solo build. While we have ways to increase damage resistance, gain more health and overshield, it pales in comparison to the strength of Restoration on Solar and the healing power of Strand Banner Titan. This build feels super strong when you have teammates. It excels at ad clearing with crystal creation and shattering and in turn giving you new lines of sight to give yourself room to work with, while at the same time, maximum damage boost for DPS cycles. Remember to leave a like if you found this video helpful. If you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, consider hitting that subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. Before we start breaking it down, there are a few tricks to help make this build feel even better. Number one, when you activate your class ability, you basically can't move. All you can do is walk and bunny hop. So make sure you're in good positioning before you use it. Number two, once you're in your class ability mode, you can reactivate your class ability to turn off the overshield and gain your movement back. And the second activation does count towards certain mods, so if you wait seven seconds before using it, you will get a bonus in a few of the mods that we are putting with this build. And number three, this barricade can be used as a saving grace. Stasis is one of the hardest classes to gain healing on, so keep in mind that you can activate your barricade when you're at critical health and let that do all the work while your health regenerates. And finally, number four, since we will be generating a ton of crystals, you have two main options to shatter them. You can use a waveframe grenade launcher, or you can use your powered melee. Waveframe grenade launchers make it super easy to smash a ton of crystals very quickly. And when you use your powered melee, you break all crystals in your path. All right, so looking at the super and the abilities. First up, for a super, we have Glacial Quake. Glacial Quake has to be one of my favorite roaming supers in the game. Not only does it put out massive amounts of damage, but it also excels at ad clear. A helpful trick for it is when you are using it, make sure to stay back a bit from the target you want to hit, and you could spam crystals by holding backwards and hitting heavy attack. Most crystals will shatter, but if they don't, once you come out of your super, use a grenade or something like that to blow up the rest. Alright, taking a look at the abilities. First up, for the barricade, it doesn't really matter since the cooldown will be overwritten by Icefall Mantle. And for a melee, we have Shiver Strike. This is the only melee for stasis, but I do have a helpful tip if you are trying to hit enemies with it. If you're up close to the target you want to hit, it's really hit or miss and kind of inconsistent tracking. However, if you hold the melee down, you'll dash for a longer distance and fly further through the air. So not only can you shatter crystals along the way, but you also can hit targets that are farther away. So hold that button down a little bit longer if you want to fly a little bit further. And for a grenade, we're taking the Glacier Grenade. This did just get a buff this season and its cooldown was reduced, but we want to be creating as many crystals as possible to generate as much shatter damage as possible. And not only that, we'll be getting extra health from shattering these crystals and generating more grenade energy in the process. All right, moving on to the aspects. First up, we have Tectonic Harvest. This makes it so that when we shatter crystals, we're going to create a Stasis Shard. These shards not only are going to give us melee energy when you're picked up by you or your team, but it's also going to give you extra overshield or health. This is one of the best options to be able to survive with this build, so it's definitely critical. And for a second aspect, I'm taking Diamond Lance. Last time, I went with Cryoclasm to shatter crystals that we create. And if you like this aspect, it's still viable. However, we have new perks and we'll be using certain weapons to shatter crystals with ease. So this time, I'm going with Diamond Lance for two main reasons. First, it allows you to pick up another fragment, meaning our build will be even stronger. And second, every seven seconds you get a kill with stasis damage, you create a Diamond Lance. And these lances can be either thrown at a target to deal damage and instantly freeze them, or you can slam it into the ground, dealing more damage, causing a slowing and freezing effect for targets nearby. This will help with dealing with tougher targets like champions or mini bosses, since you can pick up a lance and throw it at it to immediately freeze it for a solid six seconds. Having the ability to instantly freeze any target will help pair with many of our other perks and abilities. So taking a look at the fragments. First up, Whisper of Shards, making it so that shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts grenade recharge rate, and this is a major catalyst for our build. We want to be generating as many crystals as possible, so we can create more shatter damage, and in turn, gain more health and overshield. So with this fragment, whenever we shatter those crystals, we're getting a bonus 500% grenade recharge rate, and this can stack up to 11 seconds. Pairing this with 100 discipline means that we'll be getting our grenade back very quickly. And next up, we have Whisper of Rhyme. 
so that collecting a stasis shard grants a small amount of overshield for 10 seconds. Depending on the size of crystal it comes from, this can be anywhere from 5 to 35 HP. And if not at full health, this will straight up give you health instead of overshield. As I mentioned before, we're going to be generating a ton of crystals and shattering them, so now those shards are going to be giving us more health back and overshield, helping us survive a little bit more. Next up, we have Whisper of Fissures. This is going to increase the damage and size of burst when you're shattering crystals or frozen targets. This is an extra 12.5% when shattering frozen targets. And since we create so many crystals, we can easily freeze targets and this is just going to amplify our damage output and pair with our artifact mods. And next up we have Whisper of Chains, so that when you're near a frozen target or your stasis crystal, you gain an extra 40% damage resistance. And this is amazing because like I said numerous times now, we're creating so many crystals and freezing basically everything in sight. So you're basically going to have a constant 40% damage resistance. Pairing that with your Icefall Mantle, which is going to give you not only an overshield for more health, but also an extra 62% damage resistance on top of that. While you're in your Icefall Mantle, it's going to be very hard to be fully killed. And since we did pick Diamond Lance, we're going to have a fifth fragment this time. And that last fragment is going to be Whisper of Conduction. This is going to make it so Stasis Shards track to your position and make it a bit easier to stay healthy and gain more melee energy in the process. We also importantly get an extra 10 to Resilience and Intellect, making it easier to gain higher stats and use your super more often. The other option you could do instead of this is going to be Whisper of Rendering. This doesn't have any stat boost, but what it does do is give your primary weapons increased damage to stasis crystals and frozen targets. If you don't have a Wayframe Grenade, this is going to help you absolutely obliterate any frozen target and deal with crystals with ease. See normally, primary weapons do 5% less damage to stasis crystals, so being able to do 100% increased damage means it's going to be able to shatter crystals very easily with your primary weapon. I like to take Conduction so that those Stasis Shards track to me and I'm getting that boost to health and I'm getting the extra 20 to our stats, but Whisper of Rendering is also super powerful. It just kind of depends on your playstyle, so pick whichever one you like better. Alright, let's talk about ways to improve the build. First up, our stats. We're going to be shooting for 100 Resilience. Again, this build is a little bit harder to survive on, so we do want that 30% extra damage resistance. And because we are on a Titan, that's going to reduce our class ability cooldown. And because our class ability is what gives us immense amount of strength with our stasis weapons, we definitely want to be able to have that on demand ability to give ourselves overshield very often. After that, I like to shoot for 100 recovery. Having that increased regen rate means that if we do pop our Icefall Mantle and get that overshield, our health is going to regenerate in the process in the background. And it's going to do that process even quicker. After that, I do like to shoot for 100 discipline, but sometimes it can be hard to have the triple 100s. So shoot for 90 at worst and then have everything else in strength or intellect. Mobility really isn't important for this build. All right, for our armor mods, first up our helmet. I am going to be taking Harmonic Siphon so that rapid stasis weapon kills are going to create orbs. This is not only going to power up our build, but give us more armor charge as well. After that, I do want heavy ammo finder and heavy ammo scout. So it's gonna increase our drop chance for heavy ammo and create bricks for our teammates as well. Since we do wanna be playing with teammates for this build, generating heavy ammo for ourselves and our team is gonna be great all around. All right, moving on to the arms. First up, we're taking Harmonic Loader. We are taking Harmonic Loader for that increased reload speed for Stasis Weapons, since we do want to be using our Stasis Weapons a ton and working towards a 25% weapon damage bonus. And while we will be using our abilities, our weapons are going to be our main choice. After that, we are taking Impact Induction, so that causing damage with the Powered Melee is going to give us back grenade energy. I really like to use my Powered Melee after I use my grenade, since I can throw my grenade and then use my Powered Melee to shatter all those crystals. And a lot of times I'll end up hitting a target in the process. So that means right after we throw a grenade, we're immediately getting grenade energy back. And because we're shattering crystals, our regeneration is coming back as well. So then I'm also going to pair this with Focusing Strike. So it's going to grant class ability energy whenever we cause damage with the power melee. If we remember, Stasis Shards also give us melee energy. And since we want to have our Icefall Mantle as a saving grace whenever we can, getting it back as soon as we use it is going to be pretty key. For the chest mods, we are going to take three different resistance mods depending on the content you're in. I usually like to match two if there's a threat so that we can basically negate the threat and then do a third for whatever enemies we're fighting. So honestly, really depends on the content you're doing, so just match it up with whatever activity you're doing. All right, moving on to the legs. First up, I'm taking Innervation. This is going to give us back 10% grenade ability energy on orb pickup. And since we are using our weapons a ton, we're going to be able to create a ton of orbs by getting rapid kills with our stasis weapons. And this is inherently going to give us even more grenade energy back. And because we are creating so many orbs, I also like to pair this with Recuperation. So it gives us 70 health whenever we do pick up those orbs. And for the last mod, I'm actually taking Elemental Charge. Like I said before, we're creating a ton of crystals. 
which is inherently going to create a ton of stasis shards. And this is now going to make it so that whenever we collect stasis shards, we're given armor charge. And finally, for our mark. First up, I'm taking Bomber. Bomber's gonna make it so that we're given back 12% grenade energy whenever we use our class ability. And since we wanna use our class ability to gain weapon surge, this offers a benefit for more grenade energy. And this will proc both when using the overshield and when deactivating it. After that, we also wanna take Reaper so that after using our class ability, our next weapon kill will spawn an orb of power. And again, since we do get that 25% weapon damage bonus, we wanna use our class ability and immediately use our weapons anyway. So might as well generate an orb of power in the process. And for our last mod, there's two different options. You can either do Special Finisher or Healthy Finisher. If you are in group play, Special Finisher is amazing since not only are you going to have Heavy Ammo Finder and Scout, you'll be generating Heavy Ammo for your team, and with Special Finisher, whenever you finish an enemy while you have 3 Armor Charge, you're generating Special Ammo for you and your Fire Team. You'll basically be creating all the ammo you'll need for you and your team. The other option is Healthy Finisher. This will fully heal you, and Stasis can be a little bit tricky to stay alive with, so having the option to just finish any enemy and get instant full health back is is pretty massive. I usually like to try to run this if I do feel like the content is a little bit harder and I feel like I have more chance of dying since I can use this whenever I don't have my class ability to immediately gain full health back. If you do want to use special finisher, it does open up the option for running double special builds. So keep that in mind that that can be an option if you do want to run double special. All right, let's talk about the artifact. There are a few artifact mods that we do want for this build that's going to power it up even more. And the first one is going to be blast radius so that when using a grenade launcher or rocket launcher to get multi kills, we're given armor charge. And since we will be using a wave frame grenade launcher to shatter crystals, it's now going to give us more armor charge, inherently giving us either more health or special ammo, depending on which finisher you use. And I also like to take Dragon's Bite, making it so that breaking combatant shields with stasis weapons has a chance to freeze that target. It's not only going to create more shatter damage, but it's also going to pair with our next few artifact mods. The next one being Pillar of Ice, so that defeating a frozen target spawns a stasis crystal. Stasis crystals give us more melee energy, grenade regeneration, health, and overshield. And if we choose to stand next to it, it's going to give us damage resistance. So might as well generate more stasis crystals. And for the last one, we're taking Hail the Storm, so that shattering frozen targets and stasis crystals deal increased damage. And shattering crystals release shards of ice that damage and slow nearby targets. This is inherently going to give us more damage, and we're going to be creating a ton of crystals and freezing basically every target, so we're now just generating more damage overall. Next up, let's talk about what weapons to pair with this build. Since we do gain so many benefits from breaking stasis crystals, there's so much benefit in having a stasis weapon in your primary slot with headstone. There are a ton of good options out there, some of them being Horror Story, which is an auto rifle, Prolonged Engagement, which is an SMG. We also have things like Disparity, which is a pulse rifle. You want to be running for rolls with either Rapid Hit or Outlaw so that you get that quicker reload speed every time you do hit those precision shots. Since we almost always are aiming for the head with Headstone to create those stasis crystals, that's going to give us increased reload speed. A ton of these options are good, so pick whichever one feels best in your activity. If you have room for an exotic, Wicked Implement is pretty great with its catalyst since it does get a headstone. But I've also been liking Verglass Curve, which is a stasis bow, and it's going to make it easy to generate even more crystals and freeze more targets on demand. This paired with Diamond Lance means that you have immense capability of freezing any target you choose. And if you do get five kills with it, it's basically like a grenade in your back pocket. For our energy slot, the main option we have here is going to be a wave frame grenade launcher. There are plenty out there to choose from, and we're mainly using this as a way to shatter crystals. So the element doesn't really matter. Undercurrent with demo and attrition orbs or volt shot is amazing since it comes with Vanguard's Vindication, giving you back seven health on every kill. And with demo, even more grenade energy and be able to reload your weapon with ease by throwing your grenade. Dead Messenger, if you have an exotic slot available, is also a fantastic option since it can switch to whatever element you choose to break any shield and mainly because it shoots out three waves, making it easier to shatter all crystals that you generate. And I do have to mention permeability here. Optative and Lethophobia are both great options that can roll with permeability, making it so that you can take a stasis special weapon in your primary slot and all you have to do is activate your class ability to gain a 25% damage increase and change your weapon to stasis to have a triple stasis build. If you do take one of these options, I really really like to pair this with Ager Scepter in the primary slot. This is a super powerful exotic stasis trace rifle, but I only really like to do this if I have a weapon with permeability in the second slot. All right, let's talk about your heavy weapon. The number one pick is going to be Cold Comfort. You can either run with Chill Clip or Bait and Switch, but having a roll with this and Envious Assassin makes it so that when you do go into a boss fight, you can deal damage with your two other weapons, switch to this, shoot a rocket, and then when you pop your class ability, 
you gain not only that extra 25% increase to damage, but also with bait and switch, you'll be gaining a 35% on top of that. And if you have Envious Assassin and already get one of those finishers, you'll be able to unload the rest of your rockets with ease. Some other great options with legendaries are going to be Bump of the Night with Chill Clip, Fire and Forget with Focus Fury for a linear, and the Typhon GL5 Grenade Launcher with Explosive Light. But we do have two exotic heavy weapons that are stasis. And both are fun to use, but kind of situational. Salvation's Grip can be good since not only can you create more stasis crystals, but you can also shatter a ton of crystals by just shooting normally. I'm not quite sure how this compares to other weapons, and it probably can't do the most damage in boss fights, but it definitely is fun to use. So if you're trying to have a little bit more fun, definitely take this one out for a spin. The other option is going to be Winter Bite, and it actually feels amazing with this build. You gain massive ad clearing potential since it freezes so many targets. Plus we have added shatter damage this season, and when you're using the Glaive Melee while it's loaded, you're going to be able to shatter that target. But since we do also get that active overshield that is going to give us damage resistance, you can pop your class ability and then take this close to a boss and just go to town until your shield has broken and then back out. You feel almost unkillable while you're smacking away with the glaive and you have your overshield. It's definitely super fun to use. With a few more stasis buffs and more practice with this build, this build has the potential to be one of my favorite overall builds. You can create a ton of crystals, freeze any target on demand, gain health, overshield, and damage resistance with ease, and either use your powered melee or grenade launcher to destroy all of your crystals dealing massive AoE damage, giving more health and melee energy back in the process. I definitely recommend trying out this build this season and seeing how it feels before Final Shape comes around. Let me know your thoughts to the build. What would you change or how would you improve it? If you like the video and want to see more content like this, smash that like button and subscribe. That's it for me. Peace out.